Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to an art journal tutorial. Here's a sneak peek of the finished project. So today I wanted to use some of my DIY stencils. If you want a video on this, leave a comment in the comments section. So I'm starting out with a non gesso page in my 7 by 10 Kansa Mixed Media and I'm mixing in the warm color zone. I want to get kind of a corally look. So I'm picking quinacridone magenta and orange and yellow. I should have, if I wanted more of the coral here than what's showing up, add a little bit of white gesso. That would have just pushed it over a little bit. But, you know, loving the background, just applying the paint, mixing the colors right on the page. This is just a base coat of the colors. I know I'm planning on doing stenciling on top, so I'm not too worried about making it look perfect. Here I, here I kind of trying to mute it down and get more of that coral. And you can see how that did work. So these are stencils that I cut with an X-Acto knife. I designed and cut, and I just want to play with them and see what happens. Now, another goal for this page, I wanted to try this light aqua green or bright aqua green with kind of the orange background. And I'm loving how this pops. This is a definite winning color combination. And if you're mixing... Uh, background and foreground, um, that's something to keep in mind. You'll definitely see me doing more with this. And I'm loving the stencil here. When I was playing with the stencils and cutting them out, as you can see, I've done a couple different colors or sizes, I should say, just to see what happens. And that's the joy of when you cut your own stencils. Loving how this background works. Now I made this one and I kind of made it a little flowy and I'm adding the white here. And while I love this look, it does cost me some extra work later on based on what I do next. Now, I think I should have also put the white first and I, you know, because then the other colors become more predominant. Here that teal, which I loved, got pushed to the back and the white kind of takes over. So if you reverse that and did the white first with the larger stencil and then maybe the dark blue and then the teal, you would get an inc different, completely different look. Now I love the look of this page and if I had done negative painting here, that would have shown it in its best. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Just adding a little bit more color and I'm making it very busy because again, my goal was to play with the stencils. I didn't have an idea for where this page was going. I wanted to try out certain colors and give my stencils a run for their money. I'm adding more stenciling here on top of the white to knock back the white. Now I grabbed this Happy Dandelion stencil from the Crafters Workshop and there's links where you can purchase this either through Ninny's Napkins or TCW or even through Amazon in the description box below. And I'm using White Pearl Modeling Paste which is to die for. It has kind of that iridescent quality. Now when you look at this with the white that's in the background, it got very very busy. You can't see the detailing of the stencil with the detailing that's in the background. And at this point, I'm kind of frustrated with myself and thinking about what I'm going to do. So I grabbed the paints that were on my palette, the magenta and the orange, and I thin it out with water and I just paint a wash over all the background. And what this is doing is putting pushing back the white and it's allowing the stenciling that's in the white modeling paste to show so there is a picture of it before i applied the wash of the quinacridone magenta and orange and there it is after and you can see how that allowed the focal image the stenciling of the happy dandelion stencil to shine through now i'm really missing that bright aqua so I'm getting that stencil and I'm putting it on top because I want to see that color, that wonderful color combination. 
So it's never too late. I was, you know, very tempted to just rip this page out and say, okay, well, lesson learned. I got to play with my stencils. But, you know, you might as well try something. You've got nothing to lose at that point. So I'm liking how this has come. Now I'm just taking my angle brush and using black acrylic paint, floating acrylic just to edge the page. And that just frames it. You've seen me do this. 99.9% .9 of the time I do this on pages and on canvases. Removing the tape that I have there just to keep the paint and everything out of the coils. Now I'm looking for sentiments. So I grab my bin and I'm auditioning a variety of sentiments. There's not a lot of room up there and it, it just doesn't seem to have the right amount of weight. Now I like this one and then I go and I make it bigger and that seems to ground the page. Because it's so, there's a lot of white there and I've kept it as a solid block, it's also, it's given weight to the page and it's blocked up some of the busyness in the background and I really liked how that looked. You also saw me additioning some butterflies. But there's so much going on this page, I didn't need to add anything more. I'm gluing this down with my fluid Liquitex matte medium. And then I'm using the floating acrylic technique to shade around the sentiment. Again, I'm giving it more weight and focus on the page which then it comes to the forefront and other things get pushed back. So this was a fairly simple page and I achieved my goals. I tried out my stencils. I tried out a color combination and sometimes that's what doing an art journal page is all about. We also learned that if you want to knock back some white stenciling, applying a wash can do the trick and save the page. Enjoy the close-ups. Leave me a comment, especially if you're wanting to uh, learn how to cut your own stencils. Bye for now.